Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of new products at Sephora. That is the look that I'm wearing today. A really great, sophisticated makeup look, if I do say so myself. I'm always really excited to test out new products, especially with the Sephora VIB event coming up. So I'm definitely preparing that and testing out as many products as I can to prepare you for that. So let's just get into it. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market, which is why these types of videos are my absolute favorite to film. All about new makeup and telling you what is worth spending your money on. Now, before we get into it, a little bit of a self promo. This video is sponsored by Morgan Turner Makeup. I did apply to be a part of Sephora Squad, so I had a few of you ask me what that was. Basically, it's an ambassador program for Sephora, so they'll send you new launches, you get to go to certain, I guess, virtual events, and yeah, it's, it's just a partnership with Sephora, and obviously, it's a very long shot. There are so many amazing applicants, but I really do feel like, obviously, from this video, I'm such a good fit to be a part of Sephora squad so if you would like to support me and obviously no pressure I'm gonna put the link down for you to leave me a testimonial when you leave me a testimonial basically saying why you think I would be a good fit for Sephora squad it does help to hopefully move me on to the next stage in this but anyways a lot of you guys have already sent me very very kind words I love it when you guys send me screenshots of what you sent it really means the world to me like makes me want to cry <laughs> okay I can't talk about it too much because I'm just so thankful for you guys for those of you who have taken time out of your day to support me it really means the world to me and i am so thankful for the community that i've built okay i know i've talked too much let's just get into the new makeup uh hey 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 we're super close to my face but i want you to really see how all of the products work so for primer i'm not using anything new i'm going to be using the giorgio armani luminous silk hydrating primer this is currently one of my absolute favorites recently so i tried it because i did a sponsorship with armani beauty which omg slight flex right <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but this was one of the products that I tried out for that sponsorship and I have fallen in love. It really smooths the skin and hydrates. It leaves your skin feeling so plump and ready for makeup. It's an older product, but I don't know why people still don't talk about it because it is incredible. I've been loving it so much. So that's not a new product. The rest from here on out. Are pretty new products. If you miss it, I did upload a Sephora haul. A lot of these items are from that haul. Some are not, but a lot of them are, and these are items that I didn't get to try out. So Westman Atelier came to Sephora about a month ago, and you guys have been asking, I always open this the wrong way, always. But anyways, you guys have been asking me about their products, so I haven't tried them yet. I've only tried the cream contour, so we're going to try this foundation stick. I got it in the shade Atelier A2. This is called the Vital Stick Foundation Stick. And I wasn't sure if this would be the right color, but it's a bit yellow, but it's actually really nice. I'm going to start off with less, even though that probably was not less. Uh, okay, let's just blend it out. That's actually a really good match for me. What was I talking about? Maybe like a hint to yellow. Ooh, I'm liking this. I like how it blends. Really nice and easy. It's giving a very nice light coverage. Working out pretty easily. Let's get this dreaded nose area here. She's looking a little crusty on the nose though, not gonna lie. And I had some breakouts down here and it's it's not going over texture well. Um, let me try with a brush on my forehead. Just using my Pat McGrath foundation brush to blend it out just to see. I'm such a sponge girl, like I don't know how people prefer brushes. I feel like it takes away the coverage, which I know is counterintuitive, but for me using a sponge just works better. And it's very, very creamy. I'm surprised. You know how sometimes foundation sticks can be super thick and hard to move around? This is super creamy. So here's what the first layer is looking like. I've got to admit, I'm not super in love with how it's working over the textured pimply areas on my skin. It's looking a little bit dry in those areas. I did read that there was a certain way to work with these products and finesse with these products. Um, did I read into that? No, and now I wish I did. But I don't know. I just feel like if there's a certain way that you need to apply it, then it's not that good of a product. You know, 
I'm just applying a little bit of extra in the areas that need the extra coverage. I always break out on my cheeks. It's quite rude, no? Packaging is really, really nice on these products. Okay, so here is with like one and a half layers. And it has a slight glow to it, but as somebody who gets breakouts a lot, so there's lots of like dry patches and ickiness on my skin, it really doesn't agree with those and this foundation is quite pricey obviously this is a first impressions if you know of a better way to apply it or how you are able to make this work for you please don't hesitate to comment down below but as far as my first impressions for the price i'm not in love with it it does have a nice glow to it and it, i think if i apply a super light layer it will look quite nice but if the product kicks up around my zits like i just i have a lot of zits so yeah I don't know. If you have perfectly smooth skin, I think it's nice. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to eyebrows now. This is just the order that I typically do things. I picked up the Huda Beauty hashtag bomb brows and I got mine in the shade medium brown. These are made in Japan and I've used this once before and I really like it. I do. It gives off the perfect amount of pigmentation. It's not too dry, not too cakey, and it really, really allows you to get very specific with your brow hairs because look how fine this is. I have never come across an eyebrow pencil with such a fine tip. So if you really like getting those hair strokes this is perfect for you i feel like you'd run out of this so quickly though so it's not a product that's gonna make your brows look great in no time you have to take your time with this because the product is so fine <coughs> oh my goodness another thing that i don't like about this is i think the actual body of the pencil is too thick for how thin the product is because I feel like I'm gonna break it. I feel like the Hulk and that this tip is going to just break off. Now that hasn't happened to me yet, but I just think with how small and thin it is, I would have liked a thinner component in my hand. Obviously minor things, but I really do think that that would make a big difference on the feeling when applying. I just would like it to be a bit thinner. But anyways, the actual pencil itself is a really nice quality. I really like this and I just love how fine it is. I think it's perfect for feather brows or if you really have thin brows and need to make it look like you're drawing in hairs instead of having completely filled in brows. Really great for a natural brow. So I give this a thumbs up for sure. I think they did a really nice job with this. I'm filling my brows out really wonky today. I don't know why. I did show this in my haul and try it out as you can see, but I picked up the ABH Clear Brow Gel. It feels like a glue. <laughs> um, it's a brow styling wax and I'm gonna take my spoolie and I'm just gonna run it through my brows. If you like feather brows, you are in luck. This product is awesome for feather brows. I personally am not a big fan of feather brows, but you can see it makes getting a feather brow very, very easy. I feel like I look crazy. So if you're wondering how you can get that fluffy kind of look, but you don't like fluffy brows, like you don't like crazy feather brows like this, so put your eyebrows up as if you were doing a crazy feather brow. Take the end of your spoolie and push them down, move them down. I try not to go too hard with my spoolie on my skin because I feel like it moves the foundation. So that's why I like to start off with the tip just to guide and then the spoolie to reinforce. And once you like where you're at, press your brows in. Listen, I'm not personally a huge fan of this product. I just don't like the way it makes my brows feel. It feels too much like glue to me. However, if you like the feather brow, it's like an amazing, an amazing product for that. I'm not really good at making feather brows and this product makes it so easy if I ever wanted to do a feather brow. Moving on to concealer, this is fairly new. I didn't have anything newer. This is the Marc Jacobs Extra Strat. It's a foundation and concealer. I've been using it as a foundation. I'm just gonna use it as a concealer because I don't have anything else today. This is in the shade Light 180 and you guys, I'm not a fan. I don't really recommend this. It's okay, it's good enough to make work and it's not anything I hate so much that I want to return, but I find it to be drying and it just looks gross on my skin. It doesn't wear the best, particularly as a foundation. As a concealer, I can certainly get away with it, but it's 
it does nothing really to benefit my skin at the end of the day you know it covers so that's fine but it's a concealer as far as like the texture of my skin and just hydration it does nothing for that so if that's something that you look for you're not going to like this or at least i don't like it I don't know if you'll like it or not, but of all the new items on the market right now, I don't really recommend this concealer. The first time I tried it as a foundation, I thought it was okay. I was like, oh, that's nice. But the more I used it, the more I wore it, and time went on, I just didn't like it. Okay, let's move on to the next product. Now, this one I've tried before. This is from Westman Atelier. Again, I opened it the right way. And this is the Face Trace Contour Stick in the shade Biscuit. So this is the cooler of the two shades that they have and the lighter one as well. I really like this. I use this in my haul. I think it's super nice. I think it blends so easily into the skin. I normally don't like a cream contour with a brush because I feel like it moves the foundation, but you can see, I just want to show you how easily it just blends into the skin with a little bit of a press and push. And it's such a nice natural shade. Big fan over here. I definitely like this way more than the foundation. And it's not too dark of a color for my skin tone. Just looks really good and really natural put a little bit closer because I have a giant forehead. So this, if you're interested, is definitely a thumbs up for me. Okay, we're gonna go to powders now before we go on to blush. And there has been a lot of powders to come out to the market lately that I still need to try. But I have two powders that I'm gonna try today. One on one side, one on the other side. I love comparing. I feel like it's really easy to tell which product you prefer and what's better and what the differences are when you do a side-by-side -side comparison. So we have the Tatcha, the Silk powder and then i'm gonna try the dior backstage face and body powder no powder so there are two different styles of powders but i just still want to see how they compare so we're gonna start off with the tatcha on this side I haven't opened it yet haven't used this this is what the packaging looks like okay um interesting i think you pull the silicone thing out Yes, you pull that silicone thing out and the powder comes out. Mm. Do I like this? I don't think I do. I feel like I don't have control. I'd much prefer a sifter. I'm gonna shake it. Did we get product? Yes, you shake it. You get a good amount of product. You can see it has like a little bit of a light yellow color to it. I guess you can put the silicone thing back on to control the powder from coming out, but. I don't think, I don't see myself doing that personally. But anyways, I'm gonna take a little bit from the cap. I'm using a Refer number 19 brush. We're just gonna put this underneath the eyes, right here in this area, and then right here, and halfway on the nose. So these are the areas that I usually like to powder, and right in this area as well. It definitely, it mattified my skin for sure, but there still is a light, luminosity to my skin but it's very very faint but i feel like as the time goes on more of the shine is going to come through but it has a very skin like finish to the skin which is really nice you'll see a little bit of dryness right here i'm gonna attribute that honestly to the foundation the foundation just is emphasizing things that i don't really like that looks really nice let's compare it to the dr again these are two very different powders now I almost got the shade darker than this, and thank goodness I didn't. This is shade 2N. It is a neutral shade, but it's not supposed to have much color to it. This is with a swipe, um, and then it kind of blended in invisible to the skin. So I'm going to wipe my brush off, and let me blend my under eye. So this is depositing a bit of color which this is a bit too dark so i don't love that but it's nothing too visible i suppose this almost looks like i didn't set anything i hardly see any mattifying going on honestly this powder is really traceless i don't know if you're able to tell the difference on camera it did take away a little bit of the mattification but this side looks better than the tatcha side like i can see the texture right here which i did blame on the foundation but i don't see that texture right here where the dior powder is so upon initial application i think i prefer the dior i just think it looks better it's just really traceless you can't tell that there's any powder on my skin and the tatcha it's it's traceless as well but there's something that's a little bit more blurry and smoothing to the skin about the Dior. 
Of course, wear time is going to be a huge factor in this product, but initial application, this side is looking better and better. This side on my under eyes looks a little bit more crepey and textured as opposed to the Dior side, so good to know, good to know. Obviously, I will keep you updated and let you know. Okay, we're back to Westman Atelier. We have a baby cheek blush stick. I chose the shade Petal because I like a rosy pink blush. So I'm gonna take the butt, my sponge. I'm just gonna put this on my cheeks. Ooh, this is a beautiful color. It does have some pigmentation to it, which is why I like the sponge to kind of blot this color out. And I did put a little bit of powder underneath, as you just saw. This does not seem to be disrupting or bothered by the powder at all. This is a beautiful color. It looks so natural, but just a touch on the bridge of the nose. Maybe a little bit on the temples. And the reason why I'm bringing this blush everywhere is it makes the skin look a little bit more natural. Just not having pink on the cheeks. If you bring it around to different areas of the face, it's gonna look more like skin. And this is beautiful. It didn't disrupt the foundation at all. The powder didn't bother it at all. And it's sitting stunning on the skin. I'm really liking this. I think it's a great product. So I didn't have a new highlighter that was on the Sephora's list. I did have the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Ultra Glow Highlighter. You know, it's a newer highlighter. It's still on their new arrivals, but nothing new new that I've never tried before. I'm very familiar with this formula. Lots of cream products on the just arrived list, and I just don't like cream highlight. So I haven't bothered buying any cream highlights recently. So I'm just gonna use this beautiful Pat McGrath highlight. This formula, Incredible. If you are thinking of picking this up for the VIB sale, it's totally worth it. It's beautiful and it blends in so nice with that blush. I do not have a new eyeshadow palette from Sephora either. There hasn't been many good palette releases recently. I know Natasha Denona finally launched a new palette, which I already pre-ordered. The Circo de whatever. I ordered that, um, but I don't have it yet. So, you know how the last two months the makeup releases were bleh. Like seriously, I didn't buy anything. While there hasn't been anything crazy that's caught my eye, you know, things have been popping up. Like the Tatcha powder excited me, the Dior powder excited me, the Huda Beauty brow pencil excited me. So I've been picking things up one at a time to equate to this video where I'm excited about the new launches, but no eyeshadow palettes. Just a lot of um, skin products, complexion products that I've been enjoying. Okay. Base is down. I needed to give my lower brows a bit more shape because they were looking fuzzy wuzzy. No new eyeshadow palette, but I have this Tom Ford Sus La Sable <laughs> that I've never used before. I picked it up a few months ago. It's been sitting in my need to try drawer, so I finally want to use it in case you're interested in Tom Ford. Now I have these new brushes from Refer that are coming out March 20th. I got these a while ago and I didn't know any details about them, so I didn't want to use them until I knew when they launched and stuff, but how awesome do these look? So the first one I'm going to try is number 27. This is a nice, big, but a long fluffy brush but it's still gonna allow you to have a little bit of precision. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here and that pulls darker on the skin just like I suspected most Tom Ford products do that. So if you are excited about this new rougher launch, I love the rougher eye shapes. Their brushes are the best as far as shapes because they're so unique and they really are pinpointed to certain jobs that you didn't know you needed. I don't know, they just come out with such unique shapes and then they end up being a part of your everyday routine. And it's like, why did a brand never think to come out with a shape like this? So I'm excited about this refer launch just because eye brushes are superb. That's a nice natural color. Actually, let me put that down here as well. I'm gonna add in a little bit of depth. This look is gonna be nothing crazy. That's not what Tom Ford is about. Just everyday ease. So these are gonna be taupey colors with like a rosy undertone to them. Nothing too warm, which I like. More neutral. See, I'm using this brush to do everything. Okay, final depth. So it's able to really kind of layer these colors to get a very nice haze. It goes relatively deep. It's not the deepest palette from Tom Ford, but it's just enough for every day for my skin tone. Next, we're taking the 26 brush, which is this impressive size of a pencil brush. And this is gonna be perfect for lower lash line precision. <gasps> wow, what a good brush for this. Kudos to you, 
forever. Love it. I don't have another brush shaped like this. And then finally, we have a number 28 brush, which is a smaller, not quite as dense packer brush. I'm gonna take this shade right here. So this brush doesn't have a ton of density, so it's gonna apply a nice light wash of whatever color you're using for the lid. So while this palette is not new to Sephora, and it's new to me, it is very, very pretty for kind of work appropriate, but still sassy makeup looks. I like this one. Still like a neutral look, but still has a little bit of uniqueness to it. The next product that I have is from Gucci, and this is the Long Lasting Coal Liner. Now, I did have plans. I don't know if I'll actually be able to go through with it, because I've been picking up new Gucci products here and there, and I want to do like a full face of Gucci, or with what I have, you know? I was gonna save this, but I wanna try it out. Look how beautiful the packaging is. Ooh, I didn't realize that it was gonna be sharp in a bowl, but I guess not. Anyways, let's test it out. Is there anything on the other end? Yay, we have a sharpener though, so that's nice. This is a shade Noir, made in Germany. Germany makes really good pencils. Quite creamy. Okay, now let me show you something. Coal liners are meant to be blended out. And Refer came out with this brush. It's called the number 29. I think it's a copy of my favorite, well, one of my favorite most unique brushes from Wayne Goss. I use the Wayne Goss brush in my makeup kit. I use it to get really precise eyeliner with my clients because it's so much harder doing liner on other people, but I'm gonna use this to blend out this liner. And this liner is not really agreeing with my blending. It's not the most smudgy, Probably because I took too much time to let it set, but we're working it. Oh, see, you can bring it in. I don't like the look when I do that, but I just wanted to test it. But it was able to smudge my liner and kind of push it into the lash line a little bit more. So you see how it looks harsh? It's very nice and black. Just let the smudginess do the magic. Gonna take whatever is left over on that brush and just lightly line it along my lower lash line. All right, cool. So I'm gonna finish with some mascara and some lashes and we'll be back to finish the lips. Okay, lashes are on. They are Ardell 421 if you're wondering to make, they're just so natural and beautiful. Anyways, lips. So I picked up a couple of the new Gucci lip liners. <laughs> I think I know what one I'm gonna use, but this one is nude. It runs a little bit warmer than I thought, but these are nice wooden pencils. These are also made in Germany, by the way, and this is shade number three. Oh, I pressed too hard. Um, okay then. But I got number three because I wanted something a little bit more unique. So they feel pretty creamy. This is a cool orange lip liner. I definitely don't have a shade like this, but for the look today, nude is gonna be the winner. Again, it's much warmer than I thought it would be. It's creamy, but it's just waxy enough. Like it's not super creamy, like a Charlotte Tilbury, ColourPop kind of thing. It has a little bit more wax, more so like MAC, but it's still easy to work with. So I like it. I like the way that this feels. And then I don't have any other new lip products, so I'm just gonna pick a Pat McGrath color. We're gonna go with something more pinky to kind of counteract the warmness. So this is Belladonna lip gloss. Again, nothing new. Cute! All right, I'm gonna get myself together and then we are gonna do the final roundup of all the products that I tried today. Here is the final look. As you can see, it's pretty natural, pretty wearable. So let's go over the products in order that I used. So I started off with the Westman Atelier foundation. Not too big of a fan of it. It's just so pricey, so I don't really think it's worth the money from what I've tried on this first wear. It gives a very natural skin-like finish, but if you have any sort of dryness or acne, dying acne, like I do, I really emphasize those areas of my face. So I have to continue playing with this, but so far I'm not into it. The Huda Beauty Hashtag Brow Boss Brow Pencil I think is really nice. There's not any pencil quite as fine as this on the market. So it really does allow for those natural hair like strokes, especially if you have thin brows or you love feather brows, this is going to be perfect. So I really do like this a lot. I definitely think it's worth the pickup. ABH Brow Freeze is not gonna be for everybody, but it does what it's supposed to do. It definitely freezes your brows. If you are into foolproof, easy feather brows, this is gonna be great for you. If you're like me and you're not so into feather brows, I'd just stick with your normal eyebrow job. I've talked about this a lot on my channel. I'm not into it. <laughs> 
The Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick. Mine is in the shade Biscuit. Really love this. Blends easily into the skin. It's great if you're into natural makeup. It's not going to be something very intimidating. It's not going to require you to blend too much. So this is fantastic if you're into Westman Atelier. Tatcha Silk Powder versus the Dior Face and Body Powder. So far, I'm still into the Dior side more, but they've kind of evened out. But I do think that the Tatcha side does look a bit more textured than the Dior side. So the Dior is a bit more blurring from what I can tell. But of course, I definitely need to continue wearing these. First impressions don't tell you much. By the way, I am planning on doing a powder video because there's been the Gucci powder, there's been the Fenty powder, Kosas, Tatcha, and Dior. So I'm going to do a video on all of those powders in one. Um, but in the, I'm in the very beginning stages of testing all those powders. So it's going to be a couple of weeks. The Westman Atelier Cream Blush is amazing. I love it. I love it just as much as that contour. This color in particular is just so natural. It blends into the skin so nice and it worked so seamlessly over all of the other products that I used, including the powders that I put down. So it's so easy to work with. Definitely great for a beginner and if you're into natural everyday makeup. Again, not a new product, but new to me. I tried out the Tom Ford Seuss Le Sable eyeshadow palette. Again, if you're into anything that's like really bold or different, or unique. This isn't going to be for you. It's not a unique palette by any means. But if you're into the Tom Ford formula, absolutely beautiful. It gives you that simple everyday Tom Ford eye with a rose gold kind of twist to it. So I do like it a lot. But if you're not into the Tom Ford magic, then this isn't going to be for you. But I think it's definitely a nice palette. The Gucci Eye Coal. I didn't notice anything really superb about it. I'm gonna have to continue using it. So nothing really stood out to me, but nothing was particularly bad about it either. It just kind of seemed middle of the road. Wear time is really where the truth is going to speak. So I will update you guys on that. Finishing off with the Gucci lip liners. I can't speak on wear time right now, but of course I'm going to have to update you guys. But I like them. If you're into a more waxy formula, I'm happy to see this because the really creamy lip liner formulas are what is trending right now. And I've always kind of preferred the waxy side of lip pencils because you do have a bit more control when applying and just a little bit more precision. So I'm happy to see that Gucci did come out with a more waxy formula and this shade number three is so unique I cannot wait to put this all over my lips but the nude shade is very nice just be aware it does run a little bit warm hello so I actually decided to do a quick wear time update because I've been wearing the products now for about seven hours so I figured I'd hop on camera hold on let me turn the lights down it's so light I think you can see my skin better this way so I haven't done any touch-ups the only thing I've done is I've wiped my smile lines but but I'm surprised the foundation didn't get all over my mask today because I was wearing a mask. I will say though, based on my first wear, I'm not as big of a fan of the foundation. It wore away pretty gracefully, honestly, but you can see it just, it's making my skin look really textured. And you can see my under eyes look a hot mess. It's because of that Marc Jacobs concealer. I do not like that concealer. Powders consistently throughout the day. The Dior side looked better than the Tatcha side. So I think I like the Dior better. It just looked smoother overall. I don't know if you can see the difference in texture from the Tatcha side to the Dior side. Blush stayed on very nicely. Really love the blush. Uh, lip liner lasted pretty well and I like that it didn't smudge. I took my lipstick off to eat and everything, but I like the lipstick. So so overall, everything was pretty nice except for the foundation. I didn't like the foundation and I'm not sure about this Tatcha powder. I need to continue playing with it, but the Dior performed better in my opinion. Love the eyebrow pencil. The eyebrow gel worked out really nicely. Lip pencil is good. Not the longest wearing that I've had because if I had on Pat McGrath, it would still be on my lips right now. I like the eyeliner too. It didn't fade. It didn't transfer. So the eyeliner is really nice as well. Let me know your thoughts on all of the new makeup on the market. And if you agree with me, if you disagree, if you have any tips, I'd love to hear it. Don't forget to fill out my Sephora squad testimonial if you would like to help me out. It's completely up to you, but thank you ahead of time if you do do that and if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so i will see you guys in the next one have a good one